Well, Jacob, I'm glad we could do an interview with you today. Yeah, thank you for I, coming in. You know, I've heard a lot about you, and mm -hmm. as you know, we're a, basically a web applications company, mm -hmm. kind of a startup. Sure. Been going strong for just about a year now, and I think we've sort of reached the limits of our knowledge mm -hmm. about the business, and we'd like some consultation from somebody who's been doing this a little bit longer. Yeah, I think I'm probably the person. So, that, you, know. you know, we've come to you, and... We'd love, I think, to, to hire you on. And great, uh, you great. could be, you know, not only our consultant, but maybe a motivator. Sure. Um, sure. And help us out with, Absolutely. you know, the, the gaps mm -hmm. of knowledge that we, we have yet to attain. I feel like I'm perfect for that for that position. Yeah, and I'm very happy to, to be here in your office, which is kind of strange because I would have thought that um, you might want to see our workspace, you know, being well, a potential hire there. Yeah, well, I mean, that's... Because I think you would have wanted to see where you might be working. Yeah, I, I can see where your th where your thinking is, and some of my other prospective employers have thought along those same lines. But I don't like to leave the office. I kind of like to, you know, just I feel comfortable here. When I leave the office, I feel like there are, you know, like little particles in the air that are like chewing on my skin, or you know, uh, I feel really like cramped and uncomfortable, and like there's something trying to destroy me. You know, I don't know. It's, it's a very very uncomfortable situation. Do you feel like that when you go outside? Yeah. Yeah. All the time? Mm-hmm. So for you, it's basically just the office and your home? Well, no, except minus the home part, because I, I do live here in the office. I, I sleep in that bathtub over there. Oh, there's a bathtub over there. That's right. You're telling me you stay here all the time? Yes, that's right. You don't leave? No. no. I I am, uh, you know, this is, this is home base. You know, this is where I... You know, do my thing, you mm -hmm. know. Mm -hmm. So you sleep in too? Sure, maybe in that bathtub, absolutely. Okay. I, I fill up with, with hair gel. I take a, you know, like a little snorkel thing so I can get some air out in there. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, you know, submerge in there and I feel protected. I feel like I am, you know, impervious to all of the elements of the universe trying to kill me. Kind of floating in the gel. Right. You know, suspended animation sort of thing. Hmm. Kind of sounds more like a, a, a baby in a uterus. That's one way of looking at it. I, uh, I don't know that that's the way I would put it necessarily, but, um, you know, if that, if that makes you feel good to call it that, then be my guess. Well, I, I mean, I guess it's... You like feel judging good. people. I mean, yeah. you know. It's just kind of, it's different. You could say that, some people could say that, but uh, for me it seems to work pretty well. Okay. Protection. All, All right. right. Yeah. Well, that's that's an interesting point you bring up because I, I feel like that might cause some conflict. You, you, you will be in our office, right, if we hire oh, you? Oh, uh, no, I guess there's been, a, sorry, there's been a miscommunication here. I'm not going to be able to be at your office. No. no that's a misunderstanding. No. You're going to stay here? Right, I can I can contact you by the phone, by uh, Skype, by uh, letters, then letters, write letters, Telegram, singing Telegram. Uh, I can uh, the the cup with the string. Yeah, you know, I don't think anybody really uses that anymore. You know, we talked about you being a motivator. I think it just won't have as much an impact as far as motivation is concerned if you're not there in the office. If you're just some voice over a phone. Well, we have a couple of options here. Um, one thing that I have done in the past with, with employers who have had this concern is I've, uh, I have contracted out a, a, a person who will come to the office. He's about 35, 40 years old. Fern Flanagan, he, uh, he's, he's you know, done a lot of work for me in the past. Basically, he, he will go to these places and be my eyes and ears. So I will talk to him through a headset and he will say what I'm saying and I will hear what he's hearing. So it's like a, he's a conduit through which I can communicate to the other people in the office. Mm -hmm. uh, he is mentally handicapped okay. and uh, not really able to carry on a normal conversation. He's, um, he also has made some inappropriate advances towards other employees in the past. And you pay for him? Oh no, no, that would be that would be you. Okay, so now I mean, 
now we have to now we're talking about a, a, a third party middleman and that's see that's an extra salary that's another person having to be hired we were hoping just to hire you but you're, you're, you're your also skills. you're paying for his expertise and his experience in the field well see I'd like to not have to pay for anything that he offers I'd like to just pay for your expertise but see that's that's just not possible. Uh, he he's not gonna be he's not gonna like empty your, your pocketbook. He's thirty he's seventy five thousand a year. Um, seventy five thousand is a lot. It's to a big to some to some it is sure. There's no way for you to be in the office. Well, there is one way that we've used in the past. Uh, if you have uh, you know what the Pope mobile is. Yeah, the, the car with the bulletproof glass that right. Pope rides around. What does that have to do with the... Okay, if you back that up to this door, I will get into the, the Pope mobile, into the glass thing. You drive that outside, drive it to your office, mm -hmm. load it on a freight elevator, go up to the floor that you're on, drive it down the hallways, drive it into people's offices. You know, I can talk to people that way. I can, you know, be in the Pope mobile, talking, motivating, you know, and they will, you know, be exposed to my personal motivation. No, I won't, I'm not going to be able to get out of it, out of the boat mobile. I'm not going to be able to walk around, shake hands, anything like that. You won't get no, out of it? No, I will not do that. You absolutely will not get You're out not, of it? No, not. Absolutely not. Not in the question. So if I were to introduce you to an employee, you would not shake their hand? No. I could press my hand against the glass, and he could press his hand against the glass and do, do one of those things. But uh, that's about it. That's interesting. That's an interesting way to shake hands. Yeah. And you have this vehicle? Oh no, no, you would have to, uh, you would have to purchase this vehicle. Purchase it? You mean I'd have to find someone to make it? Well, yeah, I guess that's true. To pay for the manufacturer. That's, that's true. Right, yes. And then pay you on top of that. That's correct. And then any repairs on the vehicle that... Sure, the... and a driver. You see, I mean, Jacob, that's a lot of money. That's, that's a lot of money to spend on just... Well, to I get mean, I'm the best. Okay, I'm the best at what I do. No one else comes close, right? So there are there are some sacrifices that you have to make. And if you are you, are you serious about wanting to improve your business? Oh well, yeah, I mean I'm, I'm we're here talking about it, right? Like it's, neither route sounds very appealing right now. See, most well, most most people when they go for a, a, a job, they don't need all these accommodations. Well, I'm the best, and the best mm -hmm. people have quirks sometimes, and so those are maybe quirks. those quirks are. What makes them the best? What gives them the, that special edge that no one else has, that no one else can, can bring to the table? Maybe that's why I am so good at what I do. Because you're incapable of leaving a room? You get what you pay for. I, I understand that. I'm the best there is. You seem to have a great deal of confidence in yourself. Absolutely, I do. The losses don't seem to justify what I'm guessing the results are going to be. Well, they will. I've had uh, many, uh, I've worked with many companies in the past and they could, they could vouch for me. What companies have you worked for? Um, uh, red, uh, fiber optic, uh, LED, mm -hmm. church, um, uh, the, 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 um, the, the, the big, big business, uh, manufacturing company, mm -hmm. the, uh, underwater submersible, uh, project for green environment. And you know others like many, that. many others. Yeah, many yeah. Others. Well, I can't say I really heard of any of those. Well, maybe ever. you just maybe you just haven't been looking at the right places. Okay. Yeah. You came highly recommended to me, and well, I'm the best. Okay. All right. Well, the more I talk to you, the more I feel like I'm talking to the wrong person. So well, I think. Okay. Look. Um, some people have a harder time understanding concepts. They have, maybe they were born without that part of their brain fully developed. I don't know. I don't know about that. But, I mean, you know, I've worked with children in the past. Uh, children who don't, aren't able to understand these high-level concepts that I'm throwing out. These big business concepts. 
So I've developed some diagrams to use for these those who have a difficulty grasping these very basic um, very basic issues. Mm -hmm. But for, for people with, who have a less, lesser mental capacity, I've developed these diagrams that I think will help. Oh, like understand. me. Like yes. me. Yes. Yes. Okay. First, let's talk about the problems of business. Uh -huh. Problems that every business has. Miscommunication and religious tolerance. It's a vicious cycle, you see. Mm -hmm. There's a, you got your miscommunication, you got kind of exploding, exploding off the screen here. Right. And you got that religious tolerance. Just goes round and round. Just keep going on and on like that. On and on, on and on. Never ending cycle. I think you spelled religious wrong. So, is that the end of that idea? That's the end of that concept? Well, do you not understand it? Well, I'm just, but you're done talking about this, this one? I, I think I've made it very clear what I'm talking about. There's just a lot of blank space on this piece of paper. Oh. Right. Hang on to that. Maybe, maybe after looking at this diagram, you'll have an easier time understanding that diagram. A supplemental. Yes. Okay. You got your outsourcing. Mm -hmm. Widgets. Okay. Long lunch breaks, right? One of outsource, it's, it's a causal relationship between outsourcing and long lunch breaks. One causes the other and vice versa. And then okay. you got vid widgets in the middle, kind of breaking things, kind of impediment to business, really. So you're against widgets? Absolutely, absolutely. Widgets are definitely an impediment to business. Okay. Well, we're, we're a web applications company. You realize that. We, we make things like widgets. I mean, that's our product. Well, we, can't, we can't get rid of the widgets, otherwise there's no company. W widgets... Um, they just, they just, just ruin everything. Widgets. Widgets just, just ruin everything. Mm -hmm. and That's why they can't... These arrows don't go all the way through. Mm -hmm. Those are just widgets in the middle. It's like a wall. Right, yeah. And you apparently outsourcing, according to this graph, causes longer lunch breaks and vice versa? That's correct. Absolutely. But if widgets get in the way, then that doesn't happen. That's right. So isn't widgets fixing the problem? But... Um, Am I not understanding something here? No, I don't think you are. I think there's, there's definitely something that you're missing here. Okay. Um, see, I can't, I, can't, I can't read your mind, of course. And since you're doing such a bad job of explaining yourself, I'm, I'm not really sure how to answer your question. But yeah. maybe if we move on to the solutions, uh, maybe that will give you a better feel for, mm -hmm. uh, for these, these kinds of problems. And okay. you can see what I'm, what I'm talking about from a better angle. Okay. Yes. All right. And I ha I'm hesitant to even show you this because I've shown other clients this and, and they, they just go crazy. It's just... Uh, when somebody gets this information, they can just turn their business around immediately and go skyrocket. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, a, it's, it's very innovative and um, bold strategies. And it's not something that I throw around, but I feel like I, I should show you this so you can get a feel for some of the great ideas that I have. Yeah. You got, you got brains. That's, mm -hmm. that's a big deal. Mm -hmm. You need to be able to think, you know. Knowledge. Think things through. Knowledge. Brains. Yeah. And muscles. You gotta have, gotta have muscles. Physical strength. Yeah. Like, you know, if, if you've got a computer in one room, right? Yeah. You, you want to move it to another room. You gotta, you gotta lift it up right? mm -hmm. with your muscles. Move it to the other room. Set it down. That's business. That's business? That's business. Torque. That's the third factor. Torque. And this, that's really the key. Is torque. I don't think I understand the torque. torque. It's a, it kind of brings them all together, you know. Just kind of just torque move your fist like that. Just, you know, just torque. Get some torque like that. Just kind of see the movement. You need some torque in your business. Yeah. And that, that all, these are all solutions. Mm -hmm. I understand the concepts individually. Mm -hmm. I know brains. I know, I know what they are. Brains, muscles. These are all your solutions. Interesting. So I see they got three arrows leading to the solutions. That's right, yeah. Yeah. Well, what about the spots in between the Venn diagrams there? What are those? 
You don't understand Venn diagrams? Well, no, I understand Venn diagrams. I'm not sure I understand your Venn diagrams. Usually in a Venn diagram, the intersecting sections here and here, they should be defined. Like that's the most important part of the Venn diagram. That's why you do the Venn diagrams, to show where two things intersect and they make this brand new section here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's completely undefined. And then you have the arrows going from the Venn diagrams to just a word. You're, you're mixing and matching graphs and it doesn't make any sense. So you don't understand Venn diagrams. Well, I thought these were uh, kind of um, low enough that most laymen would be able to understand. But you know, maybe I should explain to you what a Venn diagram is. So you have a better understanding of, I don't think of I really what the relationship is between these three things. Mm -hmm. I think if you, I think if you see what a Venn diagram is, I think that will eliminate a lot of things. I've seen them before. Well, here's a Venn diagram, okay. right? All right. You got your A. Mm -hmm. You got B. Mm -hmm. B's cross up B and A intersect one another. Right. And in that area they've intersected, you got C. But C isn't all of that area. There's an area that's not defined as as C. Right. But then you've got D. And D is in C. It's in the area between A and B. Mm -hmm. It's in A that's not in C or B. It's in B that's not in A or C. And it has its own area, D, outside of all of them. Mm -hmm. the, the shapes and the circles overlap in a Venn diagram. That I, I get that. I get why a Venn diagram is a Venn diagram. I'm not sure what it is you're illustrating, though, with your Venn diagrams. Business. I'm illustrating business. Business oh, concepts. You know. It's very vague is what I'm saying. It's, I'm not sure I'm really seeing the solutions here. You know, maybe, um, maybe I can just throw out some ideas for you. Just some general concepts maybe yeah. that can uh, help illuminate some things. Let's refine things that just you know, come out of my brain. Just, just general ideas, you know. Um, less refined, like you mean less refined than this? Less refined than that, yeah. I mean, these are, these are perfectly crisp. Uh, Hours have been spent refining these, defining them, you know, narrowing them down into their the most clear way possible. How so many the children? How, can how many of these? How many graphs are you drawing a day? Fifty, sixty, maybe. Are the graphs the source of the of, of your advice that you've been giving to to clients? Well, somewhat, yeah, sure. Do you want to see these ideas or what? Yeah, yeah. Okay. You also seem to have a lot of problems using the marker as well. But okay, sure. Swimming after eating. Mm -hmm. That's bad. It's a problem. Yeah, it is. Yeah, you, don't, you don't want to go swimming after eating. Mm -hmm. Robots. Yeah. Robots are machines. They're automatons made of metal. They carry out functions. I've seen robot. I know what a robot is. If you don't know what a Venn diagram is, how do I know you know what a robot is? I can't just rely on these assumptions anymore, obviously. Mm -hmm. So I have to explain things to you. See, it's just like if I was talking to a, a class of, you know, third graders, you know, I just gotta you know, make gotta, sure they understand. Gotta break it down Break it them. down, yeah, you got it. Mm -hmm. Productivity, that's a big one, it's a big deal. You want productivity, everybody wants productivity. That's what we, that, that's, that's right. That's I know, I know. And ideas, ideas. You need to have ideas. Like you have ideas? Like I have them. Yeah, I've got ideas. Mm -hmm. So this is, a, this is a pyramid. It shows several concepts. Bottom layer is things you need a lot of, a, a, a great deal of. Mm -hmm. And as it goes higher, you need less of it and you need to be more careful to not overdo it. Right. Okay. So the bottom layer, things you need a lot of, fruits. A lot of fruits. Yeah. You can't have too many fruits. To eat? For business. Okay. Next layer is gadgets. You need a good amount of gadgets, but don't go overboard. If you have too many gadgets, that could be a problem. Final layer is sulfur. You need, you need some sulfur, but if you go too much, that's really a problem. Mm -hmm. But just a little bit. Mm -hmm. A little bit of sulfur. Okay. Understand? I, I get it. I, 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 get, I, I understand the words. It's just, again, it's a series of unrelated items that you've just written down on a, on a piece of paper. Just written them down on a piece of paper. You're drawing clouds around them because they're thoughts. I, 
it makes sense to me why it would make sense to you to call them thoughts because you got a little thought bubble, you got a pyramid. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it sounds like it sounds more like you should just write a little fact book for for everyday life. Like you know, hey, you know, page entry thirty six. Eat eat fruits; they're good for you. You're you know, saying they're not good for you. You might as well be sitting here telling me that to be successful, I need to do good work. You don't believe that? Is that, do you have a graph that says that? Not on me. Because I think I you could have, have saved one. a lot of time and just kind of did a, you know, a little explodey bubble with that in it. Maybe I do have one. I didn't bring it with me. I thought that was self-evident. I'm sure you do, drawing as many graphs as you do a day. You better believe it. Okay. So let me ask you this. If, if an employee had a question to ask you, let's say one of my developers, one mm -hmm. of my programmers needed to ask you something about a feature, would you show them a graph? If that's what they needed at the time, then I would show them a graph, absolutely. Do you ever explain things without the graphs? If I need to, I typically don't need to. Typically, graphs are the easiest way to explain things. Which is, I mean, obviously, these are all very easy to understand, so I wanted to you know, break it down. But you realize that you're defining elements that we all know of. You're, you're giving labels for things, but you don't describe, for instance, solutions. Mm -hmm. I know what solutions are. I know the function of a solution. But we're looking for somebody to tell us what the solutions are. What the, okay, look. Brains, muscles, torque. That's the solutions. That's it right there. That's, those are the solutions. So you're telling That's me what you're looking for. You've been explaining for a while, and I just still don't understand what you're trying to get across to me. Okay, so basically what you're telling me right now is that the solutions, I need to go, I need to get smarter with my brains, I need to go work out more for muscles, and I need to, for torque, I need to kind of move my hand like this with my fist, do the fist thing like that. Is that how we're going to get better as a company? Are you mocking me? You know, I'm trying to... These are serious. These are serious concepts. Now, if you're not serious about improving your business, then maybe this isn't the right fit. Are you not serious about improving your business? I am 100% serious about improving your business. Great, great. Then you know what? Maybe you could take a look at these on your own time. Maybe you can talk to your superior about it. Talk to your superior and they can help you understand some of these concepts. My super, my super, I, I, I started the company. I'm the owner. There is no superior. Everyone has a superior. Do you... Do you mean God? I don't know, do I? And I think I've probably heard enough here about the information. I think mm -hmm. it makes yeah. perfect sense now. And now bring these to your superior and see if he can help explain these, these high, con high level concepts to you so you can mm -hmm. really get a grasp on them. Okay. Let's, I'll take them to my superior and uh, you know, we maybe we'll get back Back to you. Possibly. All right. Look forward to working for you. Uh -huh. Okay.